So before I read my poems, I just want to tell a very short story. Um, over the last few years, I have been honored to m become friends with uh, an artist named Mark Chester who lives in San Francisco um, and who works primarily in the gay men's leather and fetish scene there. Um, and about five years ago, I was in a coffee shop looking at an exhibit of his art, and there was this one series of photos that just hit me right in the solar plexus in a way that actually, like, I'm a word brain, like, no visual art ever had before. Um, and I got the chance to correspond with Mark about this piece of art and really deepened a relationship with it. Um, and then all these years since, I got invited to be a part of this show. Um, and I knew Mark was in it, and I was like, oh, Mark, what, what are the chances that one of the things you're sending is those, those pieces of Robert Chesley? And he's like, Cole, I'm only sending one thing, and it's those pieces. Uh, this is an artist who's been working for decades um, and has a vast, vast body of work. Um, the other thing I want to say about that is that none of that vast body of work has ever been shown in a show like this. Um, and that is because Mark's work is so explicitly sexual and so brave about continuing to show gay men as sexual before, during, and after this epidemic. Or as this epidemic con continues, I'm sorry, that was not how I wanted to say that. Um, so that's one of the things that I found really important about this show. Like we're still, still getting voices out there that have not been aired before. Um, with that. There are six photographs of one man in what looks like his late 30s or early 40s. Glasses a little thin on top, a sort of little mustache that recently winked back into style only to disappear again. He's, nip he's, wicked hip he's naked from the waist up and his nipple rings date him. His body wouldn't get him far in today's gay scene. I don't know how far it took him in his. The lesions are scattered across his torso like pins across a map. No, the lesions are scattered across his torso like leaflets blown across the street. No, the lesions are scattered across his torso like the holes that burn when paper burns. And I am eye to eye with my own ghosting. A faggot born in 1985, stumbling hands fumbling to pound out skin cancer that AIDS patients develop on his phone. If I knew him, what would it change about me? One of the many lost boys who go whistling down the streets of a burned out city, walking through a loss we can never lay our hands on. I have no names to write in the sand, and I have a thousand, one for every question I will never get an answer to. In my life, I've been a twister of wreckage, holding bits of iron and brick to the light, trying to get a sense of where they come from. Where does any of this come from? When I was five, a man on the radio said that thousands of people were dying. I lay awake in my bed that night, terrified my parents would be next. Notice the things that no one thought to explain to me. Notice that my five-year-old self was more afraid, was less afraid of dying than of being left alone. If I drew lines between the lesions, would a map emerge? New constellations, Carpassi's rising is everyone's moon sign. And I am a man in his early 30s born the same year that Reagan first mentioned AIDS. Mm. Everyone I know is still alive, and everyone I don't isn't mine to grieve. They have been retreating from me since the day I was born. These lovers, these fathers, these rough outlines seen through smoke. I will never say that having loved and lost is better, just that having never loved is a sort of heartbreak all its own. The man in the photograph stares back from behind archival glass. Black frame, a window that doesn't open. Time, a treated pain. I am leaning forward as I have been leaning for the last 30 years, breath baited and blood pumping. I am here on the street corner of a burned out city. A child who cannot know what he hasn't seen. A faggot whose body doesn't get him too far in today's gay scene. Things I am not proud of. One, 
When I was a teenage queer, I had a sticker that said, just wear it in large block letters emblazoned across the image of a condom. I walked around with that on my laptop as though anything about HIV had ever been that simple, too. I am a child of the 90s. I grew up watching PSAs about HIV transmission, worked for Planned Parenthood as a teenager, and I'm the child of two doctors. And I still experienced a twinge the first time I shared a plate of food with an HIV-positive friend. Three. In the weeks after I first stared my desire for men in the face, I couldn't sleep or eat. Infection seemed so inevitable, I felt like it had already happened. Four, you want to know the super fucked up thing about two and three? The thing that kept me rolling in the night was the fear of living with the stigma, not the physical reality of HIV itself. Five, I have not known what to say when the tests of people I care about have come back positive. Six, I have let my fear overwhelm my love. Seven, I have been scared of what I do not understand. Worse, eight, I have been afraid of the things that I do. Nine, I have been served shame. And ten, I have eaten well. Things that I am proud of. One, I am a gay man who has never known a world without HIV, and I am still here. Two, I came into a community of fighters who chose life over shame even when life over death wasn't an option three. I come from a people who sweat community from the bricks of our grief and who four are still hurling these same bricks through windows with their art, who are still dragging their names to the heaven, who are still insisting that five, we are still here. Six, they have told me when I have been behaving like an asshole. Seven have bolstered me on a shattered and quaking way into manhood. I come from stern tutelage. They have told me, yes, share this plate. Yes, stagger this food. Yes, stock this bed until you understand your lineage. This legacy is eight, meant to sustain us. Nine, they have told me we must pass the easy table if 10, we ever want to be fed. Thank you.